So let's, I'm going to read this again. I've been reading this on every series, every service, but I'm going to read it again. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. So this was while the battle was going on. This is while battle was going on, this statement was made. Because there was an encouragement while they were fighting. While, while they were in battle, there was an encouragement coming. How many need encouragement during your battle? These guys needed an encouragement. They got a big encouragement during the battle. <laughs> they, they, they claimed that this might have been prophesied like a couple hundred years before Jesus actually came. But it was an encouragement. How many can be encouraged and wait a couple hundred years? <laughs> I don't know about that. It's kind of kind of over mind blowing when these guys got encouraged. Either way, they got encouraged. In verse 6 of Isaiah 9, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government, which means the dominion, which shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, and Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So this was a prophecy that came forth in Isaiah to encourage that there's somebody coming, a Savior that is coming. But he will be a multitask Savior. He will be, he will have a lot of responsibility on his shoulder, and he will come as for more than one thing for us. Amen? So he came, and what we talked about our first series was Wonderful Counselor. He came as our Wonderful Counselor. He came, that is what he shall be called, that is one of his names, amen? Then he shall be called Mighty God, meaning that God is with him and that he is part of Godhead, amen? When you look at the word God in the New Testament, it doesn't represent one person, it represents the Trinity when the word God is represented. It is a whole of the family of the Trinity. That's what God represents as, Amen? So when you talk God, you're talking about all three. You always do. And we need to remember that so that we walk in the fullness and the strength of that. Amen? And so it goes on. And then, then we, mighty God, and today we're going to go everlasting Father. And next week we're going to do Prince of Peace, which I'm looking forward to because every, everything in this order will make sense to us. So he came as an everlasting Father. What, so Jesus came to represent fatherhood to us. Jesus came to represent family to us. Amen. Jesus came to represent authority to us. What a, what a household looks like. What a church looks like. What family looks like. He came to represent fatherhood. Amen. So he came to represent how God looks here on earth. Amen. He came to say how the heavenly father looks to us. He came so we could see it and so we could believe it. Amen. So we have to look at this when we talk about the everlasting father as Jesus Christ. He came to show this is what he should be called. And we need to look into him as our father and not just as Jesus. We need to look at him as a fullness of the connection that he has. Amen? I'm excited. What about you? Excited about the message. Amen? And so as we go on this everlasting, but first of all, everlasting is forever continuing. Meaning that's everlasting and it continues in the future, meaning that there is no end. Amen? Everlasting father. There is an everlasting father and only re- there's a reason he had to be everlasting father because there was hundreds and hundreds of years that he had to represent, and then yet a lifetime, amen? So he had to be the everlasting Father, so that he could be the everlasting Jesus, so that we could have Jesus today, amen? So that we could have the Savior today, so we could have his presence today, because that's why he is the everlasting, amen? He has to be the everlasting, so that we wouldn't be able to serve him today if he was not that, amen? So he's everlasting, which means he continues in the future, it means that he's here today and he'll be here tomorrow, amen? Our Father, our experience, our Jesus will be here tomorrow just like he is here today. And we need to represent him today. And we need to lift him up today. Amen? And so as we move forward with this, and then what does Father mean? I like what Father means. It's of God as a Father of his people. The head and the founder of the household. Meaning that we have the head and the founder. So the Father that Jesus represents, he represents our head. Amen? He represents our head of all things. He represents our mindset. He represents the direction of everything we need to be. Amen? He's the head. That's the father that we're talking about today. Head of the household, group, or family, or clan. (laughs) Term of respect, of honor. When you say father, it's a term of respect. Amen? We lost that these days. We need to gain back the respect of father and to the heavenly father and the everlasting father. Amen? We need to grab a hold of that in a brand new way again so that we get excited for who the father is. He's also the ruler in chief. It reminds me of that story of the father looking for his son. That's an example of the heavenly father. When the parable, I can't pronounce the words right, but the lost son. <laughs> and, and he was looking every day for him. 
And that's how Jesus is looking for us every day. He is that everlasting father. If you're lost today and you, you don't know where you're going, Jesus is looking for you. He's looking out the window for you. He's constantly looking if you're coming back home. Amen? And, uh, and, and I, I can represent that because I still do that as a pastor. I always look for new people. Always look for those people to come home. Amen? Then in verse 7 says, Of the increase and abundance of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So this everlasting father, there is no end. Upon his throne of David, upon the, his kingdom, in the order it, to order it and establish with the judgment and justice from henceforth forever, even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of the hosts will perform this. This is a promise they had after, well, during a battle. This is a promise that we have during the battle. That he will be here forever right till the end. He will do judgment, but he will also bring you justice. Amen? He will bring the judgment upon the things that need the judgment, and he will bring you justice in those times. Amen? I think sometimes we need to wait, and sometimes we're looking for judgment, not judgment, justice, right? We're looking for justice. We see judgment, but we look for justice. We want justice in our situation and what we have. Amen? So what is our everlasting father as Jesus looked like today? First thing you have to understand, he looks like a compassionate. Jesus, our everlasting father, is compassionate. And we have to look at our father and what our father looks like. He looks like there's compassion on his kids. Amen? I'm a father and a, and a grandfather. And I have compassion for my kids. I believe I do. And um, maybe they don't always see it, but I know I have it. And when I have the compassion for my kids, it's that in spite of what they all do wrong, I still want to hug them and hold them and say, now, okay, let's fix this. Amen? Uh, I want to fix this. I want to correct this i want to know what's going on you know and so let's move forward with that as we we see this then we go on compassion let's look at psalms uh, 103 8 to 9 the lord is merciful which means he's compassionate and gracious slow to anger and plenteous of mercy so let's just read that again i'm getting confused Got a message there, and I forgot to silence it. And it wasn't God, just don't worry about it. It's all good. And so as we go here, it says, The Lord is merciful, which is the word can be translated in compassion, and gracious, slow to anger. How many like that God is slow to anger? Yeah, he's slow to anger. And plenteous of mercy. He has lots of mercy, plenteous. Plenty of mercy. He will not always chide. This is a King James word, probably chide. Neither will he keep his anger forever. This is what, what we have to look at today. In verse 8, we, I want to I point something out to you. So he, he is a God. He's a father of compassion. And he's also a God of slow anger, meaning that, that it takes a, quite a bit to get a father angry, at least in the, a compassionate father. Amen? He's slow to it. He's slow to anger. But he has lots of mercy, meaning that I me mean, as a father, I have to have a whole lot of mercy. I, I, I just We have to live in that mercy. And that's what Jesus lives in, full of mercy. Amen? then he will always chide. This word chide means to plead or strive. He won't always plead for you because he wants you to come to him. Amen? Sometimes we have to understand, first of all, he's full of mercy. He's full of kindness. He's full of love and kindness. He's full of goodness. He's good of favor, full of favor. But he says in this verse 9, he says he will not always chide, which he, he will not always plead. He will not always contend or debate against you, meaning that he's giving you a choice. A father allows kids to make mistakes. Amen? His compassion won't rule you, it won't hold you, it will lead you, but it will not control you. Amen? So there is a time where he says, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just plead all the time. I'm not going to strive all the time. I'm not going to hang on to it all the time. You're going to have to do some things yourself. You're going to have to, you have to accept me as your father. Amen? And if we look at our father, at who he is in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, it's, it's a powerful place to have our, our God and uh, he's, he's a place of rest, amen? So we're, look, we're talking about Jesus here, actually. It sounds like we're talking about God the Father, but they're one, amen? We're actually talking about the name that they prophesied that he would be for us today, amen? We're talking about the everlasting Father. In Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen? Labor means... All you that are weary, exhausted, tired, 
toiled with burdens and grief, I will give you rest. Meaning that, come and I will give you rest. The word rest means to cause a permanent, a one to cause from any movement of labor and order to recover and collect his strength. And I believe there's some people of us that need rest today. It means that there is a per, permit you to stop, amen, to hold on and take a moment and remove all stress from you so you can rest. How many want that? That's the kind of father we have. That's the kind of everlasting father we have. He said, I understand you, you, you are going through hard times. The battle's not over. But, you know, if you look at the battles, they, there are wars when they are side to side. They say, this day we stop fighting for one day. They actually called the stop. So when we look at the rest, he gives us a permit. And like when I look at the battles, they, they, ha- they have laws of battles when they fight against each other. And there are times where you take a holiday from fighting. And this is what God is saying. That, do you need a break of your fight? Well, okay, I'm going to give you rest so you can fight better, not so you won't fight again. Amen? So our everlasting Father cares so much for you. He says, let's just take a break from your havoc for a while. Let's take a break from your troubles for a while. And let's give you rest in your midst of your trouble so that you can have a break. Amen? So you can be restored, restoration, so that you can see and clearly to fight and win again. Amen? That's our everlasting Father for us. And then he goes in verse 29. He says, And take the yoke, which is a pair of balances. It says, Take the yoke upon me. And take, a, take this balance. How many need a balance in your life? We all need a balance in our life. I think we're sometimes without Jesus too much. Sometimes we're, we need a balance. We need to yoke with him so we're balanced with it. Amen? So as we walk in this place and... Um, we take the yoke, take the balances on you. Learn of me, for I am meek and gentle and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. He says, take this yoke. Take, if you want to rest, this is how you do it. How many want rest? You, you understand the love of the Father. Take my yoke. Take what I have for you. Take that load. Let me take the load off of you. Let me help you carry your fight right now. Amen. That's the father that we're talking about today. Um, the yoke. So he says, take the yoke. Pair, it's like a pair of balances. It's like two oxen putting a yoke on so they carry the load. So basically they have the, the weight on this person and the weight on this animal. Not person, but the oxen. And then they have the, the pulling power in the middle so that the balance is the same. Amen? So that's what Jesus is for us. Jesus is that father that will, if you take my yoke, he will... Help us carry everything we go through. Amen? So that's our everlasting Father. He loves us so much. And he says, I am meek. He's gentle. Everybody say gentle. He's not rude. He's not, he's not any of the debaters. He's, he's a gentle God. And he comes in a gentle heart. Amen? He's lowly, which means he's humble in heart. Did you know that God says, Jesus says he's, he's humble? He's lowly? You shall find rest in your souls. Verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What does easy mean? What does my burden, is this, my yoke is easy, meaning this, this is, this is my, it's, it's, the easy word means to be fit, fit for use, useful. It is a manageable. It's pleasant. It's, it's a place where, where it's totally manageable. How many want to live a manageable life? That's the kind of everlasting father we serve. He wants to give us a yoke. He wants to give us a place where we can live in a manageable state. Amen? So we don't have to live in a state unmanageable. Unmanage- if you're living in a place in a manageable, maybe we need to grab a hold of this yoke again that is easy, not hard. Amen? Once we, once we have that. See, people say, but Jesus is so much more powerful than me. If I yoke up, then I'm going to kind of go... Be- I often think that way. If that one ox is a little stronger than the other one, like, uh, you're going to drag me. But no. The yoke that God carries is within us. And when we balance that yoke within us, we have the strength with Jesus. Amen? We don't stay behind. We become in the place of the hands and feet of Jesus. So we become that ability that Jesus has offered us. Amen? That's the kind of yoke we're carrying. That's a powerful yoke. Yoke. Are you with me still? Then the next thing that uh, our Father is, He's our everlasting hope. Amen? When you look at Jesus, He came for hope. He came for that place of being everlasting to us. Amen? 
how many, how many understand really what hope he's given us? Hope is something not yet seen, meaning that we live in a place with Jesus, even though we don't see it, we can experience it, amen? Even if we don't understand it, we can know that he's there for it, amen? Even though we don't understand what we're going through, we understand it, amen? That he will walk through us. That's what hope is. Hope is something that says that there's something in us that drives us forward in spite of what we see, and we know Jesus is going to meet us somewhere as we walk there. He's going to meet us every step of the way, amen? That's the hope that he is for us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says in the God Word version, it says, I know the plans that, are, that I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord knows your plans. Are you going to walk with the plans that he knows? Amen? Some people, we argue the point of that we just live the plan. We don't live the plan. We've got to make a choice because he knows the plans. It means that if he knows the plans, we've got to come to the everlasting Father to understand our plans. Amen? He knows the plans, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not for just disaster. Plans to give you future filled with hope. Oh, I could go all kinds of places with that. Step on some toes, but I enjoy doing that anyway. Be okay. Right? Step on some toes once in a while. When you look at the scripture, it comes against a lot of things we believe. Because we often believe all. God, God, God put us through this. He says, that's my, my plan. The plans were to have peace, not disaster. Amen? His plan is not for you to go through. That's why he sent his son, so that you didn't have to go through what he went through. So that we could have life easier, so we could be yoked with him. Amen? Does it mean we won't suffer? No, it just means we will suffer, but we won't experience the suffer because we have Jesus with us. We won't experience it the same way. Amen? We won't experience it the same way. So when we look at this scripture, he's not disaster. He plans to give us a future filled with hope. How many want that future? I want that future. That's the kind of Jesus we serve this Christmas season. We serve a Jesus that gives us a full of hope for the future. If we choose to grab a hold of the hope, amen? People say, I don't know. Well, of course you don't know because hope is not yet seen. It's something you hope for. It's something that you know God is leading you for. Of course you don't know. That's why you have to trust. That's why you have to believe. That's why you have to be a Christian. That's why you are a Christian. Is because we don't always see what our future holds. Amen? That's the Father we serve. He gives us hope. He is the hope. Amen? Once we walk day by day knowing that He's going to lead our steps, that is the hope of the Lord. Amen? Verse 12 says, Then you will be called to me. You will come and pray to me, and I will hear you. So he says, okay, I have a plan for you, a peace, not disaster. I have a plan for you to be filled with hope. But when I give you that plan, you're going to have to do something to fulfill that plan. You're not going to just sit there and say, oh, hallelujah, I don't have to do nothing. I got it. No, no, no. Then he goes on and says, then you will call on me. He says, when I give you that plan, that's when you're going to strive towards me because you know there's a plan. Amen. When you know a purpose, when you know a destiny, you strive for it. Amen? When you have something compelling you because of God himself, Jesus Christ, giveth a desire to you, now you can walk towards it. Amen? He says, then you will call on me. He says, this is not even a question. If, if you take my plans, you will start praying to me. Amen? <laughs> because you, have, you, you get excited to serve God. You get excited to be with him. Now you desire to have a relationship. Amen? So grab a hold of those plans, amen? And it says, you will come and pray to me, and you will, I will hear you. He will hear you. Everybody say, will. We need to grab a hold of that, that he hears us. Um, I'm, I, like I said, I'm a father, and you all know that. And um, I hear my kids all the time. I don't always answer them. Any other father like that? <laughs> yeah. I don't have an answer for you today. And I don't even know if I want to answer you right now. Right? And I think God is that way. He, he will hear us. I hear them. They said, Dad, did you hear me? Of course I heard you. When did, well, we'll talk about it later. I think sometimes Jesus does that to us and says, we'll talk about it later. That's not important right now. You need to fulfill this task. Talk about that later. And I think that I never disown my kids. I always come back to it eventually. 
sometimes it takes weeks to before I can even feel settled with something they're asking me. And sometimes I think it takes weeks to hear something because sometimes we're not patient enough to hear. And we need to sometimes just know that God knows best. Amen? He says he will hear you. And in this Pacific scripture, he didn't say he'll answer you right away. I know you didn't want to hear that. But verse John, 3 John, 3 John, 1, 2, in the EMT Bible, English Modern Text Version Bible, it says, Beloved, concerning all things, I pray that you prosper and to be healthy just as your soul prospers. So there's an answer here that we need very strongly as our Heavenly Father, our everlasting Father. It says, Beloved, concerning all things, everybody say all. It's not just one thing. It's everything in your life. He says, I pray that you will prosper to be healthy. Prosper to be healthy. This is it. I pray that I'm going to give you a tr struggle so you can get sick. He doesn't say that here. So that you can, you, we might suffer sickness. I'm not coming, I'm not, I'm not belittling that, but this is what he, he desires for us. Amen. He desires for our soul to prosper so that we can be healthy. Amen. And so he's not a God of sickness. He's an everlasting father. When my kids are sick, I do whatever it takes to get them healthy. I even go overboard. That's the kind of father I am. My Mary says, ah, don't worry. It's okay. I said, no, we've got to give them medicine. Put it in. Crush those pills and put them in their drink. <laughs> get that fever down. <laughs> and Mary's all relaxed. Oh, we'll just pray. I'm not a very faithful person when it comes to at home. I'm a medicine person. But I'm a, I'm a faithful person. But sometimes when you see your kid sick, you want to see an instant result, don't you? Mary's way better than that than I am. And she just goes and well, let dad pray for you. Okay, I'll pray, but then let's get my tunnel right after that. <laughs> Come on, let's be real. We are that way. We we want our kids not to suffer, right? And that's what our father wants. He doesn't want us to suffer. He wants us to our, to prosper to health. Amen? Prosper to health. So I, when I look at the scriptures, my heavenly father wants me to pray that you prosper and to be healthy just as your soul prospers, how, how does he want me to prosper to help? He wants me to have the right thinking, the right will in my mind, the right direction, because that's your soul, thinking, you know, acting. It's, it's that very part of you that disturbs your health is your thinking, amen? It's your mind, will, and emotions that disturbs your health. You, when we over, get over emotional, we get sick, don't we? We get depressed. You, you would have to agree with that. So God says, no, I want this, you to be healthy, and I want your soul prosper so you can be healthy. Amen? So how does your soul prosper? You get yoked with Christ. You get, you get understanding of the Heavenly Father that cares for you at all times. Amen? That He's not there to bring sickness to you. He's not there to bring cancer to you. He's not there to bring depression to you. He's there to see you prosper to health. Amen? What a wonderful hope we can have in our God. Amen? And the third thing I want to talk about is everlasting Father is always with you. When my kids, some of my kids are married and gone, but I'm still always with them. I, I believe that because family is connected no matter what. And sometimes you you have a connection way beyond you can control, right? Meaning that when you're family, you're family. You can, you, I just, that's just a fact, right? And so when I see my kids, even if they're not at home, I, I still, st I'm still with them. They text me, they call me, they whatever, right? They're with them. Just because they're not in the same house doesn't mean they're not with me. And this is how our blessed father is. He always cares at all times. Like when my kids are married, I, I wonder how my grandkids are doing. I wonder how they're doing. I'm always out there thinking. I'm always, and that's how our father is. Even though you're not always in his presence, he's always with you. He's always, always looking for you. He's always looking for, for the best for you. Amen? Hebrews 13, 5, to eight. And when you look at me as a father, me looking out the best, and my kids would agree that it's not financial because I don't give them money. So sometimes we want to go to our father, God bless me financially. Well, you got to have the other relationship first. Amen? And then actually, I want money from my kids more than me. Just kidding. I think they should bless me. But anyway, that's just out of context right now. Are you still with me? Good. Here's a little silence out there. 
Hebrews 13, 5 and 8. Let your manner of living be without covetous, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hmm. This is what I have. Be thankful for. This is what I have today. Be thankful for. This is what he's given in front of me today. This is what I have. He says, be thankful, be content with you, because I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Never. I don't have a lot, but I have God. Amen? He says, be content. Me, as a blatz? <laughs> this George has a hard time being content. I love stuff. What about you? I love gadgets. I love technology. There's always something I could order online. The best invention is eBay and Amazon, right? Like, you could always get, like, you always could get a good deal from China or somewhere. You could always find something, right? <laughs> you could always find something to try out. Oh, it's only a few dollars? I'm that kind of person. But I've been learning not to be that kind of person because I'm trying to be content with what I have. Amen? Content. Because I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I believe as I grew up, as my kids grew up with me, I think that's one thing we had to learn is to be content with what we had instead of trying to be something that we're not. Amen? That's our everlasting Father to us. He will never leave us or forsake us. Wherever you are at, He's there. He's a Father. Jesus says that for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Understand that. Understand that we have a Father that's everlasting, that's more than you can understand or more than you can imagine, more than you can even experience. He is that for you. You might not understand it at this moment today, but He is that for you. Amen? Verse 6 of Hebrews 13, it says, So that we may boldly say to the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen? We need to boldly say, if we can get the team up and we'll sing the last songs from here. And we will boldly, amen? Boldly say, the Lord is my helper. How many of us actually dare to say that? I think we have a scary time because sometimes we don't experience it, so we don't want to say it, right? God, I don't experience you today. I haven't seen you, Jesus, today. I don't know where you are today, so I don't know if I'm going to claim that you're my helper. Amen? Come on, we think that way sometimes, don't we? We get caught up in that and think that, that this little situation that we are in, that he's not in, but he is. And then he goes on and says, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. That's what we need to do. See, the thing is, we need to claim that Jesus is our helper, that he is our everlasting father, and we've got to stop being fearful of what people think when we live that way and think that way. Amen? And when we claim that way, we need to stop thinking. Verse 8 says this. I'm going to skip out 7. You can read that yourself. You have a Bible, I imagine. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So remember this, that our everlasting Father never changes. When you look at the Father, I, Alpha and Omega, at the beginning and the end, that's what the Godhead is. It's not Him that changes, it's we that change. He's always there. He's always been there. He's always with us. Amen.